Hey there crew and welcome to another update on the geologic situation in Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today's August 13th, Tuesday. It's about 2.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 8.30 in the evening over there in Iceland. And as we creep ever closer to whatever's going to come next, whether that's an intrusion or possibly and very likely an eruption, I thought we would just look at some of the latest data. There's a new Met Office update out and just look at what the trends are so far. So this is just a quick update, uh, if you will. So let's go ahead and look at, first of all, our webcam view, uh, looking, I guess, southeast or east-ish from Hagafelt. You can see Grindavik here, uh, just past this skyline in the distance. And then it looks like a little bit of rain and clouds in the weather there. And so we have this uh, youngest lava field that's still um, uh, you know we have a water vapor and steam rising off of this field here so let's go right to the Met Office update uh, make that a little bigger for you so this is as of uh, today the 13th about two o'clock in the afternoon Iceland time so all the all the measurements seem to show everything kind of trending the same way that it's been the estimate of magma now in the subsurface is around 20 million cubic meters um, so we're well you know we've been in this zone or this sweet spot if you will for several weeks now of you know having the right volume of magma that could trigger an eruption and now we're probably at the high end of that and so it's it feels like something is likely to happen in the next few days uh, maybe a week or two at the, the very most here so seismic activity is still on the increase ground deformation slowed down a little bit but that's still on the rise as well um, yeah, so everything is pointing to uh, an eruption beginning, and it looks a lot similar to what we saw prior to the last eruption that began on May 29th. Uh, here they say it can thus be assumed that ma magma propagation and a volcanic eruption can start at any time, but based on previous previous occurrences, it may be delayed a little bit. Uh, they do have a graph here that shows earthquakes. So this is a nice little graph that shows uh, everything since December and this is total number of earthquakes in the area including the the negative magnitude earthquakes uh, but you can see just uh, the f pure frequency of those leading up to the December eruption of course most of these eruptions coincide with a few high magnitude quakes so you can see there's a magnitude 4 here um, the January 14th eruption had some three or three and a half magnitude earthquakes you can see here's the February 8th eruption um, then we had the dike intrusion on March 2nd and then the actual eruption in, on March 16th. This one actually had interestingly lower uh, magnitude earthquakes associated with that specific eruption. This one was interesting of course because this one had a much prolonged period uh, where it was erupting, whereas these first three were kind of over and done with within a few days. This March eruption went on for, I think, like four to five weeks, a little over a month, something like that, uh, into the early parts of May before it officially shut down. And then you can see the earthquakes picking back up and then those culminating here with a few magnitude two and almost three quakes on May 29th when the last eruption began. So since that time, that eruption went on for several weeks as well dying out I believe in kind of mid to late April uh, and then the earthquakes picking back up and so you can see we're at a point now where the intensity and frequency of the earthquakes is pretty high um, but the biggest quakes we've seen just a few over magnitude 2 so you know how much more of this earthquake um, sort of signal are we going to see before we actually get an eruption that's kind of the, the big question on everyone's mind uh, so it does look like the first four came in uh, with much more uh, shorter lag time in between the eruptions but also remember too that th these last two eruptions had a much more prolonged period of surface activity um, and so by you know prolonging the the output of lava to the surface uh, that may have just prolonged the the, the time needed um, for the next eruption to arrive so kind of where we're at right now um, and yeah, deformation suggests land uplift is going, but at a slower rate. And so we kind of covered most of the key points there with that. If we look at the earthquakes uh, over the past 24 hours, uh, we'll just go ahead and throw all the earthquakes in there. Uh, some offshore twos and threes, but that's a different part of the plate boundary system. Remember, plate boundaries are segmented, so it's not all connected. Um, it's individual segments 
that operate somewhat independently. Same with this cluster of quakes off the Reykjanes uh, tip here. Um, these we can treat as a separate batch and largely unrelated to what's going on here around Grindavik. So last 24 hours here you can see good cluster of quakes around the primary volcanic vent site from the May 29th eruption and then more of a scattered diffuse zone here to the north and northwest of Grindavik possibly coinciding with the some of the faults and the grobbins there but nonetheless we have a uh, pressurized system and these earthquakes then might be expected to increase uh, as we get closer and closer to an eruption. Um, if we just look at, let's take out some of the noise here, just look at over magnitude ones, you can just see there's just about four or so there, uh, and I believe, yeah, no twos at all, so no twos over the last 24 hours. Looking at the last week, um, some interesting relationships here. So here's from August 5th to the 11th, so this really doesn't take into account the last two days. Here's Here's the last two days, so not a lot there, but remember that's just a two day period. Uh, here's the week prior, and if we kind of go back, this is a fun little exercise, I think, and go back to, let's say, early July, so you can see um, just not a lot of earthquakes here because uh, um, you know we were still had, we just emptied and finished that May 29th eruption by this point, um, so there wasn't a lot of, pressure in the system, not a lot of magma pushing on the rock, trying to propagate and break rock. But then as we move forward through July, you can see slowly but surely earthquakes picking up along this region uh, near Grindavik. Here we are in mid-July, uh, now rolling into late July, uh, earthquakes picking up and then heading into August. So here's the 5th to the 11th and that's the most recent uh, plot there just the of the for a week period so earthquakes definitely uh, increasing over time as we look at things uh, the GPS data shows largely the same um, might be you know in some places a little bit of leveling off but then these last three data points show a little bit of an uptick but again just a few data points does not really denote a, a strong trend um, so there's the GPS data still still seeing uplift in inflation just at a much lower and slower rate than what we've seen uh, in the past. So, And then the latest uh, INSAR data looking at ground deformation, this is for a run uh, with a satellite that ended, passed over on July 24th and passed over again on August 4th. And you can see the bands of color there uh, indicating uplift and sort of where that's centered over the Svartsingi power plant, Blue Lagoon area there. And then to wrap up this brief update, I thought I we I did get an email from our good friend uh, and loyal viewer, uh, Bruce Garner. And so he's been doing his own analysis of uh, things here. So here's his, um, let's see, this is his plot of earthquakes. Um, Going back to March 16th, this is just total number of earthquakes. You can see um, not a lot going on in late March. Uh, and then as we get into mid-April, these start to increase quite a bit as the pressure starts to build in the system. And then this, of course, culminates here. Let me get my head out of the way again, as always. Um, with the May, the May 29th eruption here, where things uh, spike up even higher. Uh, then earthquakes drop back down because the eruption is going on. And then as we get into July, you can see these earthquakes start ramping up. So largely, you know, we're, we're, we're mirroring and mimicking this, this similar pattern here. And it looks like where our cluster is the last week or so on the Reykjanes Peninsula, that looks pretty broadly similar to you know, again, a few, maybe a week or two prior to this eruptive event, uh, if that's to be uh, believed is, is how this actually works. And then this other graph he put together that shows, <clears throat> excuse me, so this is him doing some analysis and somewhat trying to predict and extrapolate using the data when when this window might be. Um, and so he has, he has his modeling shows that uh, once we get to this sort of uh, GPS height uh, of about 825 or a little bit more than that to about 800 and looks like 60 or so centimeters in height that that's that's the window where we're likely to see an eruption and based on 
the uplift data, which kind of goes up and down, but more or less he's just fit a best fit line to that, it looks like, just a linear regression. Um, that gives us a window of about, um, I think it's like August 22nd or so, maybe 25th, into like the very first couple days of September. So based on Bruce's uh, modeling, it looks like that would be um, the likely window for an eruption. So, so if his modeling uh, stands up, here's one more view of it, just a little bit more uh, detailed. He's got different, each one of these colored lines is a different GPS station north of Grindavik. So depending on which one's data you go with, you get slightly different pro projections, um, but pretty similar results. So there's August 1st here, this line, here's September 1st, and it looks like we end up with, um, whoops, sorry, uh, we end up with, yeah, something in very late August, probably like the, the 22nd or so, um, maybe into, a little ways into September. Uh, let me look real quick at that email and see what his exact dates were so I don't misquote him. Yeah, he's got anywhere from the 22nd, 25th of August is like the, the earliest and then 30th to September 1st um, based on his data. So appreciate him sending in that information and if you want uh, his data and graphs and such, I can give you his email address and you can take a look at it. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. We'll just keep watching and waiting, uh, seeing if anything transpires here. Main thing to look for would be webcams and then also uh, earthquake data, but it could come quickly, right? This could all escalate to an eruption within an hour or less, uh, specifically if it's going to be in the same region we saw the May 29th eruption. If it ends up going anywhere else, we're likely to see a much longer period of seismic activity and um, and it could take a while for that vent to actually be opened up. So we'll just keep you posted here. Thanks for your support and take care.